Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! Go on an end of year retreat. Go on an end dash of year retreat. End of year or personal retreat, if you want to write it that way. Go on an end of year retreat. You can never sustainably be light and salt until you understand the power and the mystery of retreats isaiah chapter 40 please let's begin our reading from verse 28 the bible there spells clearly the condition of man it says has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth he fainted not neither is he weary it's a question there is no searching of his understanding now 29 it says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increased strength. Here is the condition of man that necessitates retreat. Ready? One to read. Let's read together. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. This is not a negative pronouncement. It's a description of a condition that is common to all men. That the wear and tear that happens to you spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and even physically, provided you are bound in this mortal body, that that wear and tear is present with all men. That even the youth, the Bible says the glory of the young men is their strength, but that the youth will faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. The bailout is in 31, but they... That means not everybody will be interested in this spiritual process. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. The Bible says by this mystery they will run and it will look like they never get tired. You are human but why are you not tired? Because they have found the power and the excellency of retreats. And then they shall walk and not faint. What is a retreat? Let's discuss this point for seriously. A retreat is a time set apart to be with the Lord. Please write. A retreat is a time set apart to be with the Lord. To obtain renewal, direction, and fresh empowerment. A retreat is a time set apart to be with the Lord. To obtain renewal, to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment. I'll take it one last time. That a retreat is a time set apart to be with the Lord. To obtain renewal, to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment. So when we talk about a retreat for a believer, it means a time that you set apart to be with the Lord. Retreats can be corporate. That means a corporate organization, a church can have a retreat, an individual, a family can have a retreat. But my emphasis here for tonight is a personal retreat. Hallelujah. And there are a number of things that must be captured in your retreat. So you can call it 4A. Or let me just guide you many of us do not understand what we need to do during a retreat it's important that I spell this out just to create a guide for us so that you will have an effective and a rich retreat many people just lock themselves and they fast and pray sleep and wake up even watch movies and go out that is not an effective retreat There are a, a few things that must happen in a retreat. Otherwise, it's not a retreat. Number one, thanksgiving. A retreat is a moment of lavish, uncensored thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Psalm 92 from verse 1 to 4. Let's hurry up. We're discussing retreats. 
as one of the instructions and now just helping us to shed more light what and what should happen in a retreat number one thanksgiving it is a good thing the bible says to give thanks unto the lord and to sing praises to thy name O most high reading to four verse two to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night three upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery upon the harp with a solemn sound verse 4 it says for thou O lord had made me glad through thy walk i will triumph in the works of thy hands it is a good thing to give thanks to the lord your retreat is not complete it's not even started if you do not start with thanksgiving so you are asking apostle if i set out time with god what should happen what are the activities that define a potent retreat number one thanksgiving you lock up yourself and you say lord thank you look what you've done in my life thank you for your mercy is that true you begin to list them you count your blessings one by one it says oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his marvelous works to the children of men he has broken the gates of brass he has caught the bars of iron in sunder lord thank you for life thank you for grace but thou O oh lord art a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord art a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head I lay me down and I slept I wait for the Lord sustain me the last time I checked statistic tells us that eight people die per second eight people die per second I don't know how I don't know what's the current figure now eight people that means from the time I started this message till now count how many people have died we need to learn to be grateful to God be thankful count your blessings and mention them one by one Lord look what you've done in my life look what you've done in this ministry look what you've done in this family i am here to say thank you like the one leper the bible records that jesus was on his way passing but when the one leper returned he found him still waiting there he waits for your gratitude thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my head for some of you in the midst of the chaos and the economic crisis in this nation and across Africa, God preserved you as if you did not stay here. Some of you did not even have jobs yet, you never begged. How could you be so insensitive and careless when you get before the God of heaven, you, you get down on your knees and say, thank you. You have changed my story. You have turned my mourning to dancing, my sorrow to joy. That all who knew me can no longer identify me because the Lord has magnified fight me in the midst of his people learn to be thankful number two what do I do in a retreat be an honest appraisal of the year or the season an honest appraisal this is the second thing you do in a retreat an honest appraisal appraisal is spelled a p p r a i s a l a p p r a i s a l an honest appraisal of the year past or the season past a retreat is usually is uh, there are all kinds of retreats i'm not going in there i've done those teachings and i'm sure that i will do it again next year but just for you to know that there are periodic retreats weekly there are monthly retreats but there are strategic retreats at defining moments in your life like maybe birthdays or end of year like we have it now because a major season is changing in your life an honest appraisal of the year or the season past in some 30 in, in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 the Bible says through desire a man 
having separated himself he says he seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom when you when you take out time to be thoughtful and to appraise the year you appraise the year against a number of parameters number one your spiritual life i'm just listing them number two your mental transformation number three your health and your wellness number four purpose and your assignment to what degree did you advance on that wise number five your finances number six your relationships there are indices that you use to appraise yourself don't just get there and say did I make money this year yes I think it was a nice year no we always use parameters like money and physical things to measure how good the year was but the success is a is a composite of many dimensions your excelling in all these dimensions is, is what adds to your overall success your spiritual life mental transformation your health and your wellness your finances your assignment relationships Take an honest appraisal of your life. Is someone learning now? How was this year 2022 spiritually? Can I say I made progress? My prayer life, my word study life. Did I grow in character, loving and, and, and walking in the ways of God? How about mental transformation? Did you submit yourself to superior materials to build your mind, build your philosophies and your orientation? How about your health? Hallelujah. How about your finances? Some of you didn't do well this year in your finances. And the product, you see, you do not prosper off the economy. You prosper off your understanding. It is true. The economy only contributes to your prosperity. It's not the basis of your prosperity. It is your understanding, your philosophy, your overall understanding. It is not even what you do. It is what you know that supports what you do. So if you find out that it was a bad year, sadly speaking, financially, there's no need beating yourself down. That's the purpose of a retreat. You take inventory. Some of us were blessed by God this year, but we were careless over our finances. If you take inventory, millions, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions and even billions got into our hands. But there may not be anything to show for it because we spent it like the prodigal son and now we are feeding with the swine. But thank God the prodigal son showed us that there is still hope. He says, I will arise and I will go to my father. In your case, you must arise and go from where you started correctly from. Are we learning? Very, very powerful. How about purpose and assignment? Do you know there are people, I was so touched by the testimony of the gentleman here. He said when he got a job, notice the decline in his life now. There are people, the moment they become blessed, or the blessings of the Lord start speaking in their lives, especially financially. Let me tell you the truth. It takes a greater level of discipline to still maintain spiritual things when you are blessed. Because now you have options. There are many people that look good. They are not good. It's just the economic condition that made them that way because there is no option. You are, you are righteous to the degree to which we see the alternatives in your life are we together if you are poor don't say you are humble by what parameter we have to see we, we, we you have to be given an opportunity to see that I can go this way but I choose to remain this way now you are deserving of honor are we learning now this is very important an honest appraisal of your life let me tell you the truth do you know why a retreat is personal? Because that is a time where you tell the absolute truth before God. If you lie to yourself in a retreat, I don't know what to call you now. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you. Forever, I love you. Forever, I love you. Forever, Lord. A time of appraisal is when 
Jesus himself, the light, shines his light upon your life. And you see yourself in the state of who he is. Ah, this year I did not do well in my spiritual life. This year I was careless. This year as a father, I was not responsible over my family. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You are before the God of heaven. This year I've been, I was insensitive to my wife and my children. Maybe because of the financial pressure. I did something that I did not believe I would do. Lord, you see, when you have an understanding from the place of appraisal, now you can cry for his mercy. Thoughtfulness is powerful. To lock yourself and sit down. Ah, I lost this favor door because of carelessness and insensitivity. What can I learn from it? Is someone learning? Number three, what do you do during a retreat? I hope I've not lost you. What do you do during a retreat? A retreat is a moment to get direction for the next season. Please write it down. When you are done with appraisal, next is direction. Direction. Your retreat is not over if you come out confused. Because you have, that is the assignment of that place. Why am I teaching you this? So that you know what to avoid. It means anything that can distract you should not follow you to the place of retreat. For instance, movies. Except if it's a movie that teaches you something. Most of us, you already know your vulnerability. When you are going for a retreat, be serious. You can't carry a series, uh, 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 what they call this thing, people. You know, all the, the movies and all of that. And then you pray for 30 minutes. And then you just promise yourself that I'll just watch for 10 minutes. Or football or something. And before you know it, three days, people clap for you thinking you were flogging it out with destiny. Whereas you allowed yourself to be distracted. See, look up please. Laugh but listen. The Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set where? Before him. He endured the cross and despised the shame. If your phone would distract you off it. Personally, during a retreat, I off my phone completely or I can put it on flight mode. If I need to use it, maybe get some information from it. You can on it by 12 midnight for 10 minutes so that all the text messages that should come in, come in and then you off it back in case there's an emergency. Apostle, I'm off my phone. You see, that you should go and flog out that issue in a retreat. The fact that you cannot give up uh, gadgets just to spend time with God it means then that you may not be having the kind of focus it takes for a great destiny someone shout direction. direction our speed in life is based on the direction we have your life will always slow down if you don't know where you are going even in driving if you know where you are going you will run with speed and arrive there but if you don't know where you are going, you have to slow down in case you are wrong. It's dangerous to turn the path of destiny in confusion. Psalm 32 and verse 8. This is a prophetic word for someone. Psalm 32 and verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Someone shout amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6. It says... In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. God can direct men. In the place of retreat, you are flogging it out. And God says, listen, this location you are, you need to move to another one. One word from God can bail you out. Are we together? Yes. I told you that the power of God only supports what is the will of God. The, 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 the administration of spiritual power is with respect to the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God does not have an assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God. Direction. Number four. What should happen in a retreat? Are you ready? Planning and resolutions for the next year. When you obtain direction from God, 
it is now time to plan planning and resolutions for the next year so you have opened up yourself for appraisal you know what is right and what is wrong you have obtained direction from god it's now time to plan i think it's god's servant bishop david oedipo that said praying without planning is playing without knowing it is true there is a place for planning most believers don't plan we stumble into our tomorrow and we meet it unplanned sadly we do this as individuals we do this as corporate organizations as families people just enter the year sometimes with blind unrealistic resolutions you have to settle down and to plan how will my 2023 be like okay god has spoken i have heard i know where he's taking me i need to plan luke chapter 14 28 to 30 Luke 14 28 to 30 for which of you intending to build a tower seated not down first and counted the cost that's planning the assignment of planning is to help you count the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it 29 less happily after he had laid the foundation and is unable to finish it all that behold him begin to mock him saying 30 this man began to build and was not able to finish the ability to finish also depend on proper planning i'm going to plan my spiritual life for 2023 my work made me so busy and it affected my prayer life my word study life i have to create a system that factors in my life please look at me do you know why many people uh, I'm, I, and i'm saying this now with respect to you know the younger generation do you know why many people finish from school colleges of you know education universities and then their spiritual lives go down because within that environment there is not much you are doing you don't have responsibility of children you don't have other things so it is just maybe lecture prayer fellowship and that's all now you are a father of three now you are a father of four now you are a senior executive in a corporation that your presence can be called anytime they can call you impromptu and say please be in london tomorrow by evening you have to redesign your spiritual life to factor in the current reality in your life if you use the template of campus where you could pray for eight hours non-stop you will be an ineffective person that worked because you did not have certain responsibilities for some of you sadly maybe then your parents were alive then certain people who were who supported you were alive now you have to redefine your approach to insist that by all means your job your growth your responsibilities do not affect your spiritual life this is the product of planning 350,000 naira five years ago it's not 350,000 naira today do you agree with me and this is not just a nigerian thing in all fairness this is a global thing it affects everywhere it's just that of course we have a unique expression of our own but i'm saying that generally there is no nation that has been immune to a lot of you know economic heat and all of that so it means you need to plan you need to plan I'm earning 500,000 per month or 200,000 per month. Sometimes, well, it's not for me to speak to you, but sometimes part of planning can be to not give birth to the next child yet. Yes, sir. You know, in Africa, we, we do a lot of things sometimes without thinking. We just keep making mistakes that later just pound on us you cannot be earning hundred thousand and you have six children it's not realistic you can't be sending them to everybody people can help you but it's not their responsibility to take care of you are we together now you ruin the life of those innocent children until they are recruited to be terrorists and the rest because there was no responsibility when you want to build a house the bible says sit down that kind of cost you don't do it standing you sit down that means your mind is calm. Now that I'm about to do this, am I prepared for this? Oh, I'm earning 100,000. I hate that job. I need to resign. If you resign, what is the plan? It is 100,000. It may not be the best, but it's still not the worst. At least it can cover your shame in terms of your basic needs while you're trusting God to scale higher.
Someone shout planning. Please take the time to plan. You are a leader over any ministry or any organization here. Have a personal retreat to plan. In Koinonia, you already know. 31st December, 6 p.m. on the dot. The prophetic word for the next year is out. Without fail, there is no excuse whatsoever. Planning. It's not something that happens just overnight. No. This is the last service. It was planned. The next service is already planned. See, this is one of the blessings that we learned in the seminary. Respectfully speaking, you see, most of the organizations that we may call orthodox and this, they are master planners. Pentecostal charismatic circles, if we are not careful, we can randomly do things and we say as the spirit leads. It is important to plan. Your child is going to school in January. They've increased his school fees. Have you seen the PTA letter? Until you see, don't buy the cow yet. You can manage with chicken and you can't go and buy a cow of 500,000 and then be begging for money for 100,000 for your child. Planning. It may not be for everybody, but this is a prophetic word for someone. In a retreat, please plan. Okay, the house rates have increased. I may not have my own property now, but how much do I pay? 1.5, 2 million naira. How did I raise the 1.5, 2 million naira the last time? Oh, it was a gift. Will it remain a gift forever? No, so I need to plan. If you know it will come through relationships, start greeting the people in advance. Since that is, is part of planning. It is funny, but it is true. Please let me have your attention. We have a lot to do. Listen, the house of God is a place of wisdom. And if we are bankrupt of wisdom, our lives will be hard. Don't send somebody a text two days to help and say Calvary greetings. You know, I'm, 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 just, just, I, I'm just asking out how you are doing. And then 10 minutes later, here comes a long list like an exam question. Just to, no, 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 no. Planning. My wife is pregnant. She's going to give birth in nine months. That's nine months notice. How do you say, oh, I didn't plan for CS? What does that mean? Nobody prays for CS, but an intelligent person, you will plan. What if? Listen, we hope for the best, but we prepare for anything. Faith is not foolishness. Don't be angry. Oh, I love you. This is a retreat. This is a, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching us because this thing, we, we need to bring wisdom to the body of Christ. You don't move around when your wife is already in the theater. You are just calling and say wickedness. Nobody likes me. No. Shout amen, please. Amen. Plan. As a father, if you did a bad job over your family, don't worry, don't beat yourself down, but plan. Why is the spiritual life of this family going down? Okay, it's because we don't pray. Maybe that time of fellowship is not there. Maybe I'm too busy to spend time with my wife and children. How can I be a better father? I'm an exceptional CEO, but my family is dying. Something needs to go well. Create a program, even if it's once in a month. I'm going to spend some time with my family. Anybody who calls you, tell them, please, I'm spending time with my family. This is one of the blessings of the white and people in the West, sincerely. You can literally give an excuse that I'm spending time with my family and they will respect it. But our great, wonderful nation, spending time with your children. So it's us that don't have to, okay. Let's finish up. What should happen in a retreat? Obtain the doing grace. Write doing grace in capital. Your retreat is not complete until you obtain the doing grace. There is a grace called the doing grace. The doing grace. Because your plans and your resolutions will come to naught if you do not put them to action, to work. The doing grace has a mandate to put fire upon your bones until there is execution. The assignment of the doing grace is to not give you rest until you put your thoughts, your plans that are on paper, you make them work on two legs. The, in John 13, 17, John 13, 17, 
if ye know these things, the Bible says, happy are ye if ye do them. So it's not enough to know. I have said I'm going to buy a car next year by the grace of God. That car is 5 million naira. I've raised 2 million naira. We thank God for grace. God is granting me grace. As I plan, you obtain grace. You start doing. Doing. I've made up my mind that my family will be happy this year. My wife and children will not have cause to say I'm an irresponsible father. That is a, an excellent plan. What are you going to do about it? You obtain the doing grace. Do you know? Let me tell you the truth. Without the doing grace, all plans will come to naught. The same way many of us, you can go back to your January journal and see many beautiful things you wrote. And some of us, sadly, not even one of them has been done. It's because you missed the last ingredient of your retreat, obtaining the doing grace. Lord, let that grace come from heaven that makes men to run, that makes visions to run. The doing grace. Romans 7, 19. Romans 7, 19. Paul was speaking and he, he vocalized his frustration. He said, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would, I would not do, that I do. That means he's saying, listen, by my spirit, there is a willingness to do this. But I find another law. There is another energy that is depleting my passion and not giving me the impetus, the drive to move forward. For someone here who has been planning, planning forever without doing, in the name of Jesus, let this be the season where the grace for execution comes upon you. Yeah. Hallelujah. One day I will get that land. You've not gone around the neighborhood to even see where any empty land is. Chances are excellent you may never build. Listen, even if it is one billion you need, it will still come by faith. Don't be afraid. And for someone you want to build a house, your budget is 50 million or 100 million, depending on the kind of house. And all that you have is one million. Let me tell you the truth. One thing I know is that signs follow. They don't go before. If you cannot take a step of faith, believing God to help you, it's better to die in his presence than to live jumping outside of his presence. There are certain risks you cannot escape. It will always be by faith. You can take that one million and buy as much blocks or sharp sand and go and pour it on that side there and say, Father, this is a sign of faith. I have made you Alpha, be Omega. I started this building with you. Now your reputation is part of this architecture for your namesake and you'll be surprised. Someone will call you and say, are you building? Say, yes. Say, God just said I should give you 10 million. And before you know it, the day you finish that building, if they ask you, where did the money come from? You say, sincerely, even me, I've added everything. I don't know where the rest came from. God is bringing healing to someone. Don't be discouraged. I don't just mean bodily healing, healing in your mind. Because the Lord is just ministering to me that there are people here who have been frustrated. It looks like your life never moves forward. There is, you are not doing anything. People are already speaking and saying, what kind of person are you? It's like a complete mark time in every area of your life. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing. always hunger for oh our hearts always hunger one more time hey, you are the one that we pray something I know about God I don't know everything about him we remain students learning him but let me tell you something about God God restores this is a word for someone apostle even my wasted years my goodness did he not say I will restore the years 
don't sit down and say by now i would have built the house by now i would have had the children by mm -mm -mm -mm. there's there's no point for regret you are talking to the god who owns time he's not limited to time look at the gentleman he said for how many years his life had been on drugs and all kinds of things but restoration just like that there is hope for a tree even if it be cut off some of you even in terms of establishment it looks like nothing is working in your life all kinds of witchcraft delays demonic things find rest my god bar is able to restore men and take 10 years and put it in one year yes this is true for you whether in politics and governance this is true whether in your career life I've not got a job and things don't seem to be working. Remember tonight is an impartation. We're getting there now. Listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen. The God that I know and the God that I serve can restore. Apostle, my prophetic grace, the, the anointing upon my life would have been at a dimension now. But I became inconsistent at a point. I became careless. I was, I, you know, I was just frost. Don't worry. Don't worry. Apostle, I would have built by now. You can imagine. I don't even have a plot of land. I am 50 years. Fine rest. The God of heaven that I know, that you know, that you have come to serve can give you rest with the dignity of kingdom integrity rest that you don't have to bend your head in shame because you maneuvered and bribed your way around no you give the healing and grace that my heart always hunger for oh. Let me speak to a family here that had it rough this year and has had it rough the years past and you're saying God are you alive all we recorded this year was death of our loved ones maybe repossession of our properties whatever it is and it looks like the only thing I can say was right in my life you may say is that my walk with God did not go down but like Job I've been beaten I do not even know what to do the Bible says in Job 42 and verse 10 that God restored the fortunes of Job. So God is a restorer. Is someone learning? Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be Holy God's fire!